everybody! You might be able to tell there's some daylight trickling in today. Usually I bring you these videos in the early evenings, but I'm a freelancer and my work kind of ebbs and flows, and today I had a little time, and I thought, what better for a day like today than a live read from a novel? So that's what we're gonna do. Now you may not know this about me, but I come from quite a literary family. My grandfather was one of the first Jewish reporters at his paper in Montreal. My uncle, until his retirement, worked as a producer at CBC, and my brother, Misha Handman, is an incredible novelist. So he's written his first book, which just came out last year with Edge Books, and it's uh, this really cool, gritty, noir, 1950s novel set in the famous Neverland from Peter Pan. The main character is Basil Stark, and he's a private investigator, but once upon a time he lived a very different life as a pirate. So I'm going to dive right in and read you an excerpt of this book. If you enjoy it, of course, it is available to be purchased, and you will enjoy it. It's a really, really fun read. If you like mystery novels, if you like a little bit of magic sprinkled in, this is for you. So here we go. My intentions upon arriving at the office are to set up a second nest for Glimmer, the fairy, to keep her from tearing apart our files when I bring her in, and to see if there are any outstanding bills that need leaving on Holly's desk. Instead, I find a client standing outside the door. Mr. Stark, he asks as I approach. I give him a quick once over. Well cut coat, but it's a little shabby. Same can be said about the hat. The man himself look, looks fit, maybe a little on the underfed side, but his mustache is ridiculous. He's not half as respectable as he's trying to seem. He also has been standing in the hall for a while. His coat is wet, and while there's a dusting of snow on the ground outside, it had stopped by the time I left home 15 minutes ago. One and the same, I say easily, walking over and holding out my hand. You have the better of me, Mr. A Yancey, a Frank Yancey. Yancey shakes my hand eagerly, then steps back to let me unlock the door. I'm sorry to be bothering you so early. I, I wanted to be your first case of the day. I'm afraid you missed the boat yet there, Mr. Yancey, I tell him, letting him into the office. I'm actually on a case at the moment, and it's only just started. I can take down some notes, if you like, and give you a short opinion, but I'm not likely to have time for an immediate investigation. Oh, I think you'll change your mind when you hear this, he says, grinning. Whatever you're working on, this is bigger. I turn to look at him slowly. Is it? I gesture to the chair. What is this amazing case, then? I, Yancey says, leaning in, have discovered the lost treasure map of Captain James Hook. I give him a long look. Thank you, Mr. Yancey, but I don't think I'll be able to help you. Have a good day. He blinks. What? Have a good day, I repeat. You'll find the door behind you. As you just came through it, it should be easy for you. Yancey looks lost. Now, hang on. I'd rather not. I shake my head, moving to the corner, and clear a space near the table by our window. It should be about the right width for a good fairy nest. This is a genuine article, Yancey says. He reaches into his jacket pocket, pulling out four yellowed scraps of parchment. I've spent two weeks putting the pieces together. I found the first map piece from Divinations by a Piccadilly wise woman. No such thing. What? The Piccadilly don't have wise women. Not part of their culture, I say. But let me guess. You cunningly followed a trail of mystical clues using only your wits and your intellect. And now you have, what, a map you can't decode? I take a quick look at the pieces as I speak. Yancey looks hurt. Captain Hook, of course, used a cipher on his map. You see, the symbols are all coded. But I've heard of you. You were his first mate, and you would know. I shake my head. I've heard it all before, Mr. Yancey. Believe me, you're not the first person to think that I had a line on a secret treasure. You're not even the first to be conned by a fake mystic. It's a con. Not a bad con. I'll admit the maps are quite real looking. A century out of date, mind you. We use paper for our charts. But I suppose paper doesn't have the same mystical gravitas. Yancey stands up slowly. You're wrong, Mr. Stark. This is the real deal. I found the first map section in an old journal in the town library, right where the wise woman said. The second was concealed in Varuner's Bay, and with your help, I can get eaten by a number of creatures, I say. If the captain had a secret treasure, which I suppose he might have, its location died with him. And if you want to go wandering in the woods in search of it, you'll join him. Go away, Mr. Yancey. I'm busy. He grabs the map pieces off the table. Fine, then. I'll solve this problem with or without you. 
And when I find Hook's treasure, I'm not giving you a share. There, at least, we will be equal. Yancey slams the door hard on his way out. I don't even look over. Between supposed ancient maps and Glimmer's Nest, I'd rather focus on the thing that might actually affect my well-being and happiness. So there you have it. That is an excerpt from Shadow Stitcher by Misha Handman. It is full of all kinds of fun, intrigue, people thinking they found something when they haven't, mystery, adventure. It's a really, really good read and you should absolutely go check it out. I don't know how to put links and comments on YouTube, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but I will try to put a link for you to buy it. And if not, you know how to use Google. It's 2000 and... <laughs> All right, I will see you guys soon. Thanks for joining and good luck getting through. Bye-bye.